Hey, what's up everyone? DW here, Darkwing Dad, uh, bringing you the second installment, uh, Numero Doso, of the uh, War Machine custom painted helmet that I dubbed Iron War Patriot because it's a War Machine helmet, but it is the colors of the uh, New England Patriots uh, as per request. So uh, if you've watched part one, you've seen how I got everything smooth, everything nice and uniform. Uh, ready for, for paint. Uh, in this video here, we are going to be showing you some painting. Um, some techniques, if you get little blemishes in your paint, uh, we'll be doing some wet sanding, we'll be doing some polishing, we'll be doing some LED eye install, and merging this helmet all together to look like one beautiful masterpiece. So without any further ado, we're gonna get the video going, let's go. So jumping right into the painting process, I waited about 36 hours after my final coat of primer to apply paint. Uh, those first couple layers, you always want to do very light. Um, when you do light coats, uh, you can apply them a little bit more frequently, I guess. So I waited about 10 to 12 hours before uh, I applied the next uh, layer of paint. Uh, but I recommend, like I said, about two coats of light um, paint on there. And then after that, you can gradually kind of add a little bit more, but you just want to apply it evenly, uniform, not too heavy, um, just a very thorough uh, application of paint and you'll see you'll get results just like this here. Uh, I had a couple pieces that got some trash in the paint. It was like some dust or something, so I had to go over with 3000 grit and wet sand that off and then uh, repaint it. Uh, but overall, I was able to knock out the blemishes. It was nothing too crazy. Um, after waiting uh, about two days, I started applying clear coat, as you can see on the faceplate here, and I started applying clear coat to the remaining red and blue pieces uh, also seen here. Uh, so after everything started looking good, um, we had to get into wet sanding, so let's jump right into it. All right, so moving along in the uh, painting process, and what we have here is we have some parts which have been clear coated, and then we have some parts where we're still in the painting process so they're still kind of these have to get masked off and painted so I haven't really messed with those all that much but uh so what we have here is uh these pieces here um I had to get some of the dust off of them here but uh they just got some trash stuck in them I don't know if you can see they've been kind of dusty because I've just been kind of leaving them in here I always let my parts sit as long as possible before uh I go into sanding, so you can see those those little zits there, as I call them. That was just something that got trapped in the paint. Uh, same thing on this piece here. You can see some of those craters, and that was actually dust that landed right after I painted. What happens is it lands on there, and it sucks the clear coat up. So it uh, these are really dusty, so I got to wipe all these down. This is the only piece that I have. Uh, done this too. So this piece actually looked just like this piece with with these craters. I had three or four of them. Or I should say these these zits. I had a couple craters. I basically wet sanded this down and buffed it, polished it, and then applied a coat of clear. So there's still some blemishes in there. So this still has some wet sanding to do, but looks way 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 better so that's pretty much what i'm going to do with all these these parts here don't really have any major defects it was it was just a group it was really just the blue ones that have all those blemishes um i was working in here and there's just too much air moving around and all this landed on the print so now i gotta fix it real quick but it's okay because i'm gonna do so much wet sanding this thing will look like glass so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna hit these uh, with some 1000 grit and then 3000 and then 5000 buff and polish them down 
see how they look, and then probably add another layer to a clear and repeat as needed. So these pieces here, um, this piece I'm actually gonna wet sand because some junk got in here too, and then I'll respray this red. These other pieces are fine. These are pretty much ready to go for clear. This piece I have to start masking off as well. Silver face plate is fantastic. That thing is pretty much good to go. So we're just kind of moving along. So I'm gonna start wet sanding these down and getting these cleaned up. All right, so I just wanna kind of show you guys uh, what I'm doing and the results I'm getting. Now, as stated, when you get these little craters like this, so a crater dips in, a zit pops out. When you get these craters, you really have to focus on that particular area. So in here, what I did is I hit it with a thousand, I hit it with 3000 and 5000, but you can see that it's not even touching these craters, okay? Because they dip in. So when you're going across the surface, that crater is under the surface. So what you really gotta do is you have to freehand it and take your finger and kind of work in there. All you really want to do is kind of get to this point. So you can see that these craters aren't gone. And I've got some schmutz on here I got to get off. These craters aren't completely gone. However, when we hit it with clear coat, it will be gone. Okay, and you can see how much more reduced these craters are. You can see I actually got them with the sandpaper because they're dull, which is good. Whereas these are still complete. I mean, these stand out like a sore thumb. So if this happens to you, you basically have to freehand it. If you use something that is straight, you're going to have an issue. But I did 1,000, 3,000, and 5,000 and repeated that. And I got to this point here. So this is good where we're at. Because then what we'll do is put two coats of clear on. It'll completely fill this in. You'll still see it faintly. Um... This piece is a good example. Uh, there's one or two on here. Let me see if I can find them. They're very faint. And you can't, so you can't even really see them all that well. You have to get it, oh, there's one right there. Okay, see them right there. Now when I go through and wet sand that and then buff and polish it, you won't even see it. So you can see how it's so faint. But we're gonna do that same process to this. This is this has already been wet. This this I did what I'm doing to this. It's almost completely filled in. I will repeat that process, and you'll never know that there were craters on there. So on this one, the only reason I'm doing a thousand because these are a lot deeper than what was on the uh, on those ear pieces there. These are you can see there they're just there's a lot to them there. So and you sometimes you can even the camera can actually pick up the piece of dust that got in there. Regardless, it will go away, but I wanted to show you if that happens, this is the point where what you want to get to. And you can see that we're not burning through the paint. We have plenty of coats of clear. So what I'm going to do is buff and, well, I'm going to finish sanding the rest of this, buff and polish it, do a couple coats of clear and then wet sand again, and it will be good. Um, again, I'm showing you trials and tribulations. This is completely my fault. Um, I was working in this shed while putting shelves up and that's not the smartest thing to do. So what happened is I didn't get all the sawdust off and there was dust and it was on the print. And then when I painted it, either closing the door or whatever, it landed on there. So that's why I'm actually building a paint enclosure to avoid situations like this. So I'm going to continue wet sanding this and then show you guys how it all looks and yeah, start kind of putting this thing together. I mean, I still have painting to do on here. I gotta mask this off and paint that, but I wanna get all these top pieces here done so I can start gluing this together so we can actually see what, I guess you could call him the Iron Patriot because it's War Machine's helmet, but it's a New England Patriots theme. So I guess he's the, maybe he's the War Patriot. Maybe that could be the name. I don't know, but I'm gonna keep sanding guys and then I'll show you an update here. So sit tight. All right, so here's a little back taping 101. So what we're doing with the uh, War Machine helmet here is, uh, this whole bottom part is going to be blue, so uh, this is all painted uh, heavy red, if you remember. And just basically masked this off, so um, what I did was I took actual black pinstriping 
and lined it all in this groove to get it nice and defined and close to, as, to the edge as possible. And then I heated it up with a lighter just so it's it's bent and it's really concourse along that edge. Um, there's some areas that there's a little bit of raising, so I'm going to hit it with a lighter one more time. But uh, it just helped to keep it nice and flat and everything. So what we're going to do is just double check the seam here. And then we are going to, uh, what I'm actually going to do is just take a panel tool and go along this edge. Um, you can also use like a credit card or your driver's license, something that kind of bends. Um, your finger doesn't really get fully flat on there. But I'm just going to go along that edge, push this down, and then hit all this with blue. Um, and then once it's dry, I'll peel all this off and take a look at how it looks. So I'm going to get this uh, little pinstriping here kind of leveled down a little bit more. Make sure all my painter's tape is nice and tight and hit this with some blue. All right, so I didn't do a, a prep video on this just because it's a, it's a pretty similar uh, process that I do. But this is the, uh, the red jaw plate. And basically what I did was I took a uh, painter's tape and I lined it all along this outer edge. Initially, I was going to try to um, tape off this little, I guess, crooked peace sign, <laughs> you could say it is, um, and the outer, and then just leave, just do the basic insert cheeks. But when I looked at it, it was far, far too much work, and it, there was just a lot of, it was, it was a high risk, low reward. One, it could look kind of weird, um, but two, it's... Uh, these metallic paints, uh, you pretty much just have to spray them and, and, and hope for the best. Um, you can't really touch them up with wet sanding or any sort of paint brushing because it just doesn't lay right. So I kind of went with my gut and said, you know what, it's not going to be detrimental. If I wanted to, I could take some red pinstriping or something and try to put that on there, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to leave this whole cheek uh, one solid color because in all reality, in the War Machine, um, on his helmet, this actually is like a, a gunmetal gray. Um, so I think that will look really good. So what I'm gonna do here is, uh, this has been painted with a couple coats. Uh, it's dried long enough. I'm just gonna go ahead and peel um, all of the uh, painter's tape off. So let's get this off and see how it looks. Well, other than some light adhesive that was left over from the painter's tape, which that will happen if you leave it on too long. That's why I kind of rushed to get it off, um, which I'll get that off with some solvent cleaner. That'll come right off and it will not damage the red paint. Um, it came out pretty good. What I am going to do, though, just because on the top here, it's a little bit in these corners here. Um, I'm more than likely going to get some um, bl dark blue pinstriping and basically start at one corner and go all the way around just to make this look very defined. Uh, I'm just going to get a very, very thin piece just to kind of clean up some of these corners. Um, it's tough. It wasn't sanded that great in these corners and you can see some of it, but a lot of this is just actually the paint lifted off when I pulled the tape. So I'm actually, while it's still soft, I'm going to try to just kind of flatten that with um, a uh, panel tool. Um, this side wasn't quite as bad a little bit cleaner but it's a very intricate area so it's really this is just this side i'm going to try to smush that down here um, before the paint fully hardens but i know this top part had some rigidness to it just because where i printed it without a support so it got kind of uh, scraggly there but i do feel that once i get that pinstriping over it, i've done it before on other prints all this stuff here um, i'll hit some of this with some red paint and then um, I'll just get that uh, pinstriping on there. So I will do a video of that process, but uh, I'm gonna just kind of clean this up a little bit and we'll move on to the next part. All right, so uh, what I've done with these pieces here is uh, really focus on getting rid of all of those little um, dots and those dips that we had. Uh, there's some wet sanding, it's like slosh. That's what those white spots are. So I gotta wipe this down with isopropyl alcohol. You can see I got one more little divot right there. So I'm gonna have to throw some clear coat on this and probably wet sand it one more time. But I'm gonna wipe this thing down and then uh, throw some clear coat on there. Try to fill that last divot down. This one is pretty good. See, it's, uh, I, gotta, I gotta wipe it down. I got some streaking on there, but there's a little divot right there. But after we wipe this down and put some, about two coats of clear on, that should all be filled in pretty good. 
So I'm just kind of showing you how I was able to get rid of most of those divots. So it's a process that if it happens, you got to repeat a couple times. You got to clear coat, wet sand, clear coat, wet sand, and kind of go back and forth. But um, knock down a lot of the orange peel, hit this edge a little bit more. But I'm uh, just going to wipe these down, throw some clear coat on, and uh, see how they look. So just a little tip if you're doing uh, intricate areas where you have masked off. Um, I highly recommend getting a nice painting detail brush as such. And you can get those anywhere. Uh, Michael's craft stores or even Walmart and places like that. But I had, if you remember, some red that leached over on the silver. Now our main goal is to put the blue on this outer brim right here. Um, but there was some of it was on this flat part, uh, the red. So what you do is you take the paint that you painted with, which I was using the Rust-Oleum Metallic. Just do a couple sprays in here. It's, it's pretty much dried out now, but, and you just kind of take your brush in there and mix it around, get it on there, and then just go over the edge. Now, if you get it on the red, it's not that big of a deal because it's gonna be covered with the blue. But the fact that the red was on the silver, you would see it, which we don't want. So I just kind of went all along the edge here and just kind of filled in anything that you might see um, after the blue is applied on. So um, that's definitely something that I would recommend. Like I said, a small detail brush. And if you want to conserve, I can't get this thing in focus for the life of me. If you want to conserve that brush, just make sure you have some acetone or some nail polish remover. Uh, immediately kind of dip it in the remover and then clean it um, just because that will uh, that'll get ruined pretty quick so you, if you can conserve that brush just dip that in there clean it right away and you're good to go um, so I'm gonna let this sit for about an hour just to kind of let it dry uh, because it being metallic I did kind of have to put it on heavy um, so I'm actually gonna run over a hair dryer uh, just to put some heat on it let it sit for an hour and then we'll get that blue vinyl tape on and then this will have some clear coat and we'll have a have a look at how it looks Stay tuned. All right, so showing you another tip here, uh, cause like I said, my OCD kicks in and I don't like seeing little imperfections in these pieces. But if you do paint something, especially with the clear coat and you get those little craters. So if you remember this, uh, this particular earpiece had a little crater in it. Understand, so you've got basically a, a dip. No matter how much you sand on it like this, you're not getting in that little that little crater here, okay? So a little tip is to take some clear coat and just spray a little bit in your cap and get your precision um, paintbrush again. And just pick up a little, a little dab or a little blob and kind of when you come down, just touch the, the tip of the surface to fill that divot in okay so now you can see that that divot is no longer a divot it's more it's it's a it's a bubble it's raised which is great because then what we're going to do is we're going to throw clear coat on this we're going to wet sand it and smooth it all out i had another little area right here where something got in the paint and when i wet sanded it it took the red off so i just took some red paint and covered it but notice how i kept that more flat if it's pretty flat to the surface you want to leave the paint flat if it's a divot you want to kind of glob it up or, or fill it in so that divot is no longer a divot it's now a little bubble i don't know how well you can see that but what we'll do is allow this adequate time to dry and then throw some clear coat over it we'll wet sand it we'll clear coat it again and you'll never even notice it's there so just a little tip if you're getting those little craters um and like i said usually what happens is if it's something that's raised like this one it was something that was on the paint already if it's something that it's it, it craters in, it's likely dust that landed on there and sucked it sucked the clear coat into the dust, and that's why there's a little crater. Also, things like oils that are on your hand um, can affect that. If there's water left on here, those are all things that can affect uh, clear coat and paint from being sprayed. So. Just because it craters in doesn't necessarily mean it's something that landed on, um, but it's, it's basically what happens. That's why you get those craters is there was, some, there was something on the surface and it absorbed all of that clear coat instead of laying flat and uniform on the surface. So um, 
we'll let this sit and we'll check with that shortly here. Um, it's been about an hour, so I'm going to start putting the vinyl on this chin piece here and we'll see how that looks. All right, so this is actually that small ear piece that had those two little imperfections. And you can see after uh, wet sanding this, uh, it's a little bit visible there, but we're gonna actually re-clear coat this and you will not even notice that it was there. Uh, this was where some of the paint came off and you can see I took just a little bit of the clear coat off. So what I'm gonna do is do two more coats of this it should fill that in, really won't be all that recognizable. But I had to go with um, some 600 grit to knock down this uh, little dimple area here. Because I remember I put the clear coat, like a bubble of clear coat. So I went 600, 1500, 2500, 3000, 5000. But I can tell you that once this whole thing's clear coated, you won't even really notice it all that much. So get some clear on this and see how it looks all right it's a very similar situation here with the uh, mask uh, no I don't do this in my kitchen I just do this because the lighting is great see that little run see how there's that little glop you got to get rid of that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sand this with a very very small piece of 600 grit sandpaper and then I'm going to go over it with 1,500, 2,500, 3,000, 5,000, and you will never know it's there. So let me show you what it looks like after. All right, so here is that little side after some sanding. Uh, and of course, it's going to be very dull because it's it's been sanded. Um, but hopefully you can kind of see that that little glob that was there that's gone. Um, and essentially what I did here was I took a very, very small piece of 600 grit. You don't want a big piece because if you start sanding on these and get these edges, you're going to, you're going to jack it up. You're going to take the paint right off. So what I did is I focused right where, just where that run was. And I sanded that. So I did 600, very, very small piece. And then I bumped up to 1500. And then I went to 2500. I went to 3000. And I went to 5000. Um, as you go up, if it happens to go over that edge, um, I mean, these are less and less aggressive. Um, but really, what I was doing is just kind of taking the tip of my finger. That's why you can see there's just a small section um, on the sandpaper because I'm basically folding it and just using the tip of my finger and massaging over this. Uh, to uh, to knock it down same thing with this here. You can see there's just a small area So essentially all I'm doing is just kind of taking it and just taking the tip of my finger And just kind of holding I'm trying to do this with one hand here Just kind of holding it and just going like that just with the tip So you want to try to avoid the edges uh, as much as possible when you're getting rid of runs because you're being you're focusing just on that area um what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit this with a polisher real quick just so I can show you that I've completely eliminated the run. I also did it in a couple other spots on the mess, so I'll show you those real quick. Don't mind the mess. It's Sunday morning. All right, so here is the uh, jaw piece to the Iron War Patriot or whatever we're calling it. Uh, but I've added the blue pinstriping, so it's not paint. Um, around this jaw piece. It is not clear coated yet, so there's still a lot of orange peel and stuff. But the idea behind this was to kind of bring some blue highlights to it. Uh, I already did a test fit and it looks really good. It kind of pulls it all together. But more importantly, it kind of hides some of the blemishes. Now on the top, it kind of hangs over and, and cuts into the silver. I may trim that down, I may not. Um, but realistically, where all this paint kind of leached through, it would be very, very hard to get that completely clean. Um, and realistically, probably what would happen is the red would kind of leach into the silver. Like where you go to touch up the red, you'd get silver on and you'd just be going back and forth, back and forth and it would just make a huge mess. So the blue just kind of cleans it up. Again, this is gonna be a display piece when, you know, this is mounted up on a wall, you know, similar to that. Um, it's, it's, all you're gonna see is that blue highlight and be like, wow, you know. Um, we're using that exact template right there, just a helmet scaled bigger. 
Um, and that's actually not even that good of a print. It's, it's a pretty weak print. I did it pretty fast, but you can see up on a wall, it looks great. So that little blue highlight there is really just gonna add a lot. It just makes it look so much better. You know, that just looks bland and that little rim of blue really makes a heck of a difference. Uh, and of course, when we get the clear coat on it, I'll get rid of some of those random PLA lines that are kind of floating in the silver that I really couldn't get knocked down anymore. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. And we'll, we'll have a look at it and uh, get some clear coat on this. All right, so here's all the pieces uh, of the helmet. Uh, all the blemishes have been removed. Everything's been wet sanded, recoated, wet sanded, polished, uh, and, and looking great. You know, the wet sanding, the polishing, the re-clearing, getting rid of those defects really made it look awesome. Uh, you can see here, uh, just doing some test fitting just to make sure everything looks good. That was before I put that blue pinstriping in the cheeks. Uh, but just the helmet overall looked awesome. Uh, on the back piece here, you can see I added that silver pinstriping uh, just to kind of add a little bit of color to the back there. Um, overall, when it was time to start putting the helmet together, I just used standard uh, industrial hot melt glue. Um, it works great. This is a display piece. It's not going to be moving around or anything. Uh, hot glue works good, but if it is a cosplay piece that you're going to be wearing frequently, you might want to go with something a little bit stronger like JB Weld. Uh, after it was all together, it was time to move on to the eyes. I really wasn't sure what color I wanted to do. You know, should I do red? Should I do something like a blue? Um, I had a lighter blue. I kind of looked at all of them and I had white and sitting back and looking at them, uh, I think white looked the best. So we decided to go with white and that brings us to the next segment of the video where we install the LED eyes. So let's check it out. All right, so moving right along, uh, we are now into the uh, LED eye installation tutorial. Uh, we have opted to go with white. Uh, if you've watched any of my other um, LED eye tutorials, I think I only have one, um, but uh, the Black Panther one, uh, these are just white ones. And the first thing we wanna do is kind of turn them on because we do wanna cut uh, this film off because it does look, um, you know, way better uh, with that little film off. So first thing we want to do is just turn these on so you can see, you don't want to peel this off and expose where this light is because then it'll it, it'll be brighter than what we need it to. Um, we want to cut it right along the line here. So just with some uh, box cutters or X-Acto knife or whatever you might have that is sharp and will cut a thin piece of plastic about three passes over. And then some people like to leave them like this. You can kind of see what looks better. I usually just take this off completely on the back too. If you're wearing them, you definitely want this plastic completely off because you will not be able to see through it. If it's display, you can technically leave this back off. I just think the light shines through. I think it just looks more, it looks more white. Um, some of the pictures I was taking, it almost looks like it's light blue. It's not really picking it up in this video, of course, now, but uh, I just take the film completely off, but just make sure I leave that little section right here. So I will repeat the process on this one. Okay, uh, and then <laughs> again, um, just because I, uh, I don't know, I just find it works. I like to use my little uh, oven here, stovetop, to uh, heat up the lights to bend them. Um, if you try, I'll try to show you here. Um, if you tried to put these in just straight, They just, they just don't sit right. Uh, there's gonna be big gaps no matter which way you put them, whether it's with the wires facing in or facing out. Uh, so what you wanna do is you wanna just add some heat to these and kind of push them on the faceplate and it will just create a natural curve uh, to um, flow with the faceplate, so to speak. So that's what we're doing. So I start with one at a time. I like to leave the light on. I want you to see it, how it's kind of sagging there. And then 
You just kind of want to take it and push it onto the face plate to make that curve. I'll do it again here. I'll try to get the camera repositioned. And you basically just want to take it and kind of push it along the area. So you can see how it creates that curve and that's what we want. So we want to let it cool down and then we want to double check to make sure it fits on the face plate. All right, so it's, it's cooled down for a minute here. So what I like to do is just kind of take it and put it up and just make sure it's kind of covering all of the eye but the LED isn't poking out through. So that's pretty much, that's it, as tight as it will go because if I push it this way a little bit, you're gonna see some of that sticker. And if I move it this way, you can see that it sticks out there. So these are pretty much an exact fit right there. Pretty much fits perfectly. So heating that piece up allows it to contour the eye uh, 100%. So I'm just gonna repeat that process now with the other eye. And you want to, I'll go back over here. So you wanna see how you have this going. So the wire is gonna go in the middle here. So you wanna do the same thing uh, with, with this LED eye. So when you mold it, you want it to be like this. I mean, if you do it like this, it'll be okay, but it might light up different. You can see how these have different hues. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know how great it shows up in the video, but you want whatever side you have, if it's the solid side, you, on this side, you want that matching. If you do it, you may get a different color or a different pattern, depending on the way the acrylic's cut. So we want to uh, heat this up basically uh, the same way that we did it, coming in with this facing towards the mask, so. You can see that's also an exact fit. So once you leave it on there for a second, just kind of let it cool down. And then you can hot glue them in place. All right, so once we had the uh, LED eyes bended to the contour that we needed, it was just time to mount them. And again, not rocket science, just use some hot melt glue. You can see I used it on the whole inside of the helmet there, and it does hold the helmet together very well. Um, so I basically use the same procedure um, with the eyes, you know, I'll kind of flip it around, look at it, make sure it's lined up, do a couple dabs of glue to hold it in place, uh, make sure it's dry, and then just add a little bit more to reinforce it. Uh, do that with the left and right eyes. Um, and it's, it's pretty much good to go. Nice thing about hot glue is if something becomes uneven off-centered or you need to move something around, it's very easy just to heat it up or take a razor blade and just kind of scrape the glue off and start all over. If you do something like super glue, JB Weld, anything that's more permanent, um, and you mess up, you're kind of in trouble, you know. So I always like to stick with... Uh, you know, hot, hot glue, hot melt glue, whatever you want to call it. Um, just keep in mind that if you are using hot glue and you're leaving these in a hot area, um, I wouldn't do that. Um, these are obviously staying inside an AC, so the hot glue will hold up very well. Um, at the end here, uh, I just take the controller piece, which has the batteries and the on-off switch. Just kind of mount it in the front. That way there's easy access. When they want to flip the lights on, they can flip the eyes on and show their piece off. But uh, hot glue for the win. That's what I recommend. Works great. Quick, fast, and easy. All the things we like.
All right, so we're pretty much winding down. Uh, all we have to do now is just do a final polish on the helmet. Um, so the reality is, is from just grabbing the helmet and moving around, um, putting the eyes on and just flipping it and rotating it and just touching it. There's some scratches and some swirls and stuff in it, which we don't want. Um, we want to make the paint look as good as we possibly can. And although it looks good, we want it to look great. So what we're gonna do is just do some, uh, some old school DIY polishing. Um, I've done this in some of my videos. Uh, it's very similar to uh, my wet sanding video where I show how to buff and polish. This is the same concept. We're just going lighter. We're just trying to give the we're trying to get rid of light defects and give the paint more pop. So what we're going to be doing is just using the drill with a heavy polishing pad, and then we're going to go over it with a uh, finishing pad. Uh, so something that's not really too coarse, has a little bit of grit to it, but nothing crazy, and then something that's really really fine to really smooth that paint out and give it the pop that we want. Um, we're going to be using some Gion polish. This is a fantastic product. Um, you can use it to heavy polish uh, and to final polish. So we won't have to use two different polishes. We're just going to use this one. We're just going to use two different pads and our drill. Uh, it'll work out really great. So all I'm going to do is basically just kind of hold and cradle the helmet, um, polish over it. Uh, I'm going to be wiping it down with a very, very soft and brand new microfiber towel. Uh, this is a 600 GSM towel, super, super soft. Um, so if you're interested in doing this to your helmets or your prints, uh, these are some products that you're definitely going to need. Of course, I can leave links in the description at the end if you'd like, or you can always just comment. But I'm just going to polish this real quick, give you guys a final look at the helmet, and we will wrap and wind this video down. So we're just going to time lapse the polish, show you when it's done. You guys can let me know what you think. So as stated, this polish was just a light polish. This is just to get real minor defects, little scratches and swirls. So you don't need to go too crazy. Um, you don't need to push and put excessive force or pressure or anything like that. Um, this is just to smooth the paint out and give it some extra pop. Uh, keep in mind, it is a drill. So if you do put excessive force or you know push too hard, you, you can damage the paint. So you wanna be careful. There are other polishers that you can use. Just most people have a drill readily available. So don't get too aggressive with it. Uh, just kind of make sure the pad is making, you know, adequate coverage, going over it nice and smooth and just cleaning up and smoothing out that paint. Uh, it'll leave you with a nice, shiny, popping paint job. All right, everyone. Well, that's it. That's a wrap for this video segment. Uh, I am putting a cherry on top of the War Machine or Iron War Patriot, <laughs> as I as I named it. Uh, but the uh, the War Machine helmet with the Iron Patriot, uh, or should say New England Patriot themed colors. Uh, I think it came out really cool. Uh, overall, it was something different that I've never done. Uh, I'm not a Patriots fan, but I did enjoy making it. Um, I know they didn't do that 
too hot this year. Uh, Tom Brady, on the other hand, did great, so I'm sure there's a lot of New England fans crying, but <laughs> um, overall, very fun. I know there's a lot of content. I'll make sure to leave a video index in there uh, to kind of segment everything, so if you guys are looking for a specific part in how I got this helmet to look like this, uh, you'll have it uh, indexed for you. If you are interested in how I got it smooth before painting, check out part one of this video. Uh, it goes over all of the steps and processes I did to get the helmet ready for paint. Um, I will leave links to any products that I use in the description. Uh, if you guys have questions, just leave me a comment. Um, like I said, I know there's a lot of content. Um, I know there were some bad and good things that happened. Um, I don't hide anything in my videos, you know, with the uh, the dust issue that I had in the paint. Um, it sucked that it happened, but I'm glad it happened because it shows you guys how to fix it. it. And it does happen. You can have the cleanest environment for painting and you can get dust, you can get trash, you can get things in your paint. Some people might not know how to fix it. Or they might think just keep painting over and over and over. It's going to fix it and it's not. Um, I try to be very informative to help you guys um, get your prints looking, you know, as good as this or even better. You know, so... Uh, you know, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you are a subscriber, thank you. Thank you so much. If you are not a subscriber, click that subscribe button because we got a lot of cool new builds and projects and things uh, coming up. Um, we are going to be doing a helmet unveiling at Universal Studios, so that'll be cool. I'm still working on the, and that'll be next week, um, and I've got the War Machine, uh, Punisher War Machine suit that I'm building, so I'll have some updates on that hopefully in the next week. Uh, I also have a bunch of other little uh, just projects that I'm currently working on. So uh, 3D print related, finishing related, uh, like I said, hopefully uh, tips and tricks to help you guys complete your builds uh, to the fullest. Uh, so for each and every one of you that are a subscriber, thank you so much. I appreciate your um, support and, of course, your feedback. So if you have any comments or questions or criticism, please leave a comment. Let me know how I'm doing. If you guys like the video, let me know. But for now, this one turned out wicked awesome because that's, that's what they say in Baston. But uh, that's a wrap on this, guys. So uh, I'm going to cut this video out now. Uh, enjoy some final shots here. I'm going to put the Iron War Patriot in the photo booth, take a couple uh, high-res pictures. So enjoy these last few pictures, guys. Leave me a comment. Be on the lookout for next week's video. It'll be coming up soon. So until then, DW out, guys. Have a good one, and we will see you later.